What's up guys, welcome back to RuneScape, welcome back to me doing some more quests today in the hopes of finally reaching the Yell City in a few episodes, roughly four. So let's see, today we are gonna be uh, taking care of Morning's End Part 1. Very well, this is the quest right here, let's see what it says, talk to Elluned. Elluned, oh th this, is the, uh, this is the roving elf we've uh, chatted in the previous quest. Somewhere in the elven forest of uh, Isaf Dare, I'm gonna show you how to reach that. A quest from 2005, quite the only. Let's see, uh, in terms of items, it's gonna be asking for two pieces of silk, a bucket of water, check, a feather, also check, a piece of leather, two or more toad crunches, got five just in case, maybe a little overkill, a magic log, not sure this is gonna work or not, but I got some magic logs, the big book of bangs, I have no idea what that is, the quest guy doesn't even mention it, 10 to 20 coal, or a barrel of naphtha, I already got a barrel right here, if you're curious on how to craft this, simply check my biohazard video, that's um, where I crafted two of those, one for that quest and one for this quest. Very well, I think we are ready. It says you'll need to defeat mourners of up to level 86. Long to very long, so buckle up, let us begin. First, let me find the elves. Now, to find this elf, Elund, you will have to go either here or here. There's two possible locations. Let's head directly to Port Cyrus and then walk walk basically up to the point, and if by any chance the elves are not gonna be there, we can just hop worlds until we can meet them. Luckily for me, the elves are right here, and we have to talk to Elund. Hi there. Hi, I hear you finished consecrating Glariel's tomb. Well done, well thank you. It was a worthy deed. Oh, I have been asked to inform you. Arian Win requests a meeting with you in Letia. Sorry for butchering names in advance. Letia, I know nothing of this place. I will take you there if you like. Um, yes, please. Well, let's go then. That's kind of hard to teleport us away like this. Elund hands you a crystal teleport seed. 8 charges. Here you go, if you ever need to get back to Letia, you can use this. Use it sparingly as it only has a few uses, but I can re-enchant re it for you. Well, thank you a lot. I had better get going or Islwin, <laughs> these names though, Islwin will get worried. Oh, look at this, new music track. What the heck is this place? I have just realized I got teleported right in front of Aryan Wind, so let's talk to him right away. Good day, Lord Fafion, I have been hoping to see you. It has come to my attention that there are large numbers of those, you know, as mourners, crossing the mountain pass through Arandar. Mourners here in Tiruin, but why? Why? It is quite simple, really, and it is hardly a big secret. Those you know as mourners are in fact elves from the city, would you look at that? The big question is, why are they heading to Ardoni in such numbers? Mourners are elves? This is news to me as well. But I thought they were the West Ardoni guard. This is why King Lathas would have you believe. We have been unable to infiltrate West Ardoni. The Mourner Guard could identify us as enemy elves before we could even get close to the walls. They must be up to something new, something we have not anticipated. Right, cut to the crux, what do you need, uh, what do you need me to do? That which we were unable to do. Penetrate the Mourner's hideout in Ardoni without alerting them to your presence. Find out why they are there and why, or rather what, they are up to. So let me get this straight, you want me to infiltrate the mourners and find out their plans, I guess that's it, yeah there you go. And just how am I supposed to achieve that? I have no idea, but I know we can count on you. If I had a plan I would share it with you, but I'm lost for ideas. You have proved you are capable of such things in the past. 
yeah, with my with my trusty quest guides. As I said before, there have been sightings of mourners crossing the mountain pass. Very well, I will see what I can do. Okay, so next you have to go here, as far as I understand, and um, <laughs> the path is rather annoying. All I've done was to teleport to the lodestone, go north, and then I can just show you from, uh, from this perspective. Go north up until the bridge to the camp, cross the log, go through the dense forest, go through, uh, go through this path, dense forest again, and here I am, crossing another log, and that's how you access the pass. Also, obviously, make sure, um, be aware of any traps, such as this tripwire over here. There you go, a mourner! We will have to kill him and grab his gear. So let's do some combat. Let's actually jump this one, it's a little closer. Still far away. Oh, look at that wolf going vertically. Impressive. Finally, we've reached the mourner. There you go, kill him. And grab, well, basically everything. This, this. I'm even gonna grab that letter, I don't know what it says. Let's try read it. To whom it may concern, this is to certify that the bearer of this letter has passed all entry requirements for the Death Guard. Yeah, they don't have too many uh, safety mechanisms, I mean anyone who has this letter is eligible to, to bypass any sort of security. I would have expected his name written down somewhere, guess not the case. It seems like we have a problem with the outfit we just got. <laughs> it's bloody. There are blood stains all over it. So, um, or rather over the top piece. There's one way to fix that. We will have to go to Taverly. It's funny how everything gets matched in these uh, RuneScape quests. I've also uh, noticed the guy washing the clothes in the river here. Tegrid. Let's, uh, let's chat with him. <laughs> so you're doing laundry, eh? Yeah, what is it to you? Nice day for it. <laughs> Suppose it is. Do you know any way to remove blood stains? <laughs> blood stains, is it? Well, the soap I use can clean almost any stain. Really, that sounds like just the thing I need. Can I use some? No, I don't have very much soap left and I still have lots to get clean. Alright, can you tell me where I can buy some? You can't. I make it my own secret recipe. Uh, okay. If you know a way, just tell me. I'll give it a try. Oh, whatever. Um, yeah, he, he made fun of me. Well, I guess we will have to just serve ourselves and uh, search the laundry basket. You search the laundry basket. It's full of dirty robes. On top you see a bar of soap. Still the soap. <laughs> you wait until Tegid... Tegid? Oh, take it, I, th I thought it was take it. whatever. You wait until take it is looking the other way, and there you go. We got the soap. Let's see now, let's start using the soap on the... Uh... There you go, you give the top a good scrub with the soap and rinse away the bloody suds with water. And then we are with the mourner's top. Let's now fix the trousers. So for the pants, we will have to go back to Letia, so let's activate the crystal. And find a, find a guy called Orenwen. There she is, right here in this house, northwest. Hello, how can I help? Um, do you mend clothes? I do, but human clothes are too hard to mend. They do not have the finesse of elven garments. I need you to repair some elven clothing as it goes. Let me take a look. Yes, I'm showing the pants. There is something disturbingly familiar about the design of these trousers. They are made for an elf, even if they are not, ma not made by an elf. But can you fix them? Of course I can, but I will need two sheets of silk and some bare fur. Hopefully what I have in my inventory will work. I need bare fur and one sheet of silk. Okay, there you go. Done. I have all I need to mend your trousers. Hand them over and I will get started right away. 
Right, are you done? Pass it, pass the trousers. Oh, come back in a minute. Okay, let's wait. Now, while we wait, the quest guide says we should probably buy three of each die. Well, three blue ones. Three red. I know I'm just buying one, but... Three yellow. And one green. This is all we need. Should probably place them here. May as well buy another set. I'm, I don't have too much inventory space. Let's maybe drop the bucket. I don't think we need that. So all I can do is buy another set. And that's gonna make two of each. I was gonna say unless they stack, which unfortunately they do not. Green and yellow, there you go. Yeah, that's all I can purchase for the moment. Maybe if I push it, but no, I'll have no uh, no storage for my uh, for my pants. Speaking of which, there you go. My trousers seem to be ready. So I'm gonna do something. I've just stored my armor so I can wear the uh, mourner set, which is basically gonna relieve some inventory spaces, so I can actually go for three of each die. Very well, we seem to be ready. Now we gotta go to the Mourner's Headquarters. And uh, we are just gonna teleport to the Ardony Lodestone. Quick tip, quest guide says I should only be wearing Mourner's gear, not everything, not anything else. So I'm also gonna be banking my uh, jewelry. Let's see now, so this is the headquarters right here. We'll have to go inside. Oh, this is the trapdoor. I was trying to locate the trapdoor. What the heck is this? Whoa, Dark Beasts! Haven't seen those in a while. Let's now talk to the head mourner in his office right here. Hello, I'm... Ah, I take it you are one of the new recruits? Well, I'm... Uh... Come on, alas, have I look at your paperwork then. This guy definitely looks, <laughs> looks like an elf. You hand over the letter. This seems to be all in order. Welcome to the Death Guard. As you may know, part of what we do here is keep the people believing in a plague. Why? Hmm, this could take some time. Do you really want me to explain it all? Yes, please. Are you sure? I'm scared. Yes. Can you not just follow orders without the need of an explanation? Yes, okay, fine. God, that, that was scary. Good, now let's get on with it. One of the things we do to keep the rumors of the plague active is to keep that old fool farmer Bromty believing his ship are infected. The old half-wit thinks just because his ship are an abnormal color that they're all ill with plague. It's amazing what a bit of dye can do. You dyed them? You do not think they end up those ridiculous colors naturally, do you? Anyway, shame of it is, we have yet to find a way to stop the dye from washing out. So we need someone, i.e. you, to go and re-dye them. Simple enough, you want me to give a blue rinse to a load of old ship? Not quite. For starters, the ship need to be dyed red, yellow, green and blue. But most important is that you are not seen doing this by anyone. Also, you'll need to re-dye them the colors they already are, or the farmer may notice the change. That sounds tricky. We have a gnomic device that fires fat green parcels that rupture on impact. Unfortunately, we have run out of the uh, parcels and the device is broken. Okay, we have a gnome inventor here too. Unfortunately, he's not being very helpful about fixing it, but you can talk to him if you like. Here is the key, he's next door. Okay, let's go have a chat with him. Oh god, what the heck is that? Let's see, there's a poor gnome, isn't it? 
is it? Okay, that, that's a that's a uh, grim scene. Let's see now. Let's use the key on the door and see what this gnome has to say. Oh my god, this <laughs> this is such a view. Okay, hello. <laughs> Will you help me fix um, this thing? I'm not helping you fix that, as if it hasn't caused enough trouble as it is. Your friends have already tried every torture in the book. God, this is a stubborn gnome. I'm still not telling anyone squat. Have they tried uh, stretching your eyelids yet? God damn, that's horrible. Yes, it didn't work. How about feeding you nail and prune stew? That's all I've been living on since I got here. Set fire to your nose real hair. Hair, god damn, nose real hair. Let rabbit rabbits nibble your toes. Give you a Chinese burn. Yes, yes, and yes. Try them all. Quite like the toe nibbling. Extracted your wisdom teeth yet? Ask gnomes aren't wise, so we don't get them. Face it, you'll never put me in enough pain that I'll tell you what you wanna know. I don't know about that, but let's go with it. I used to play gnome ball as a kid. This is a walk in the park in comparison. Alright, I get the picture. What will work then? Ah, you think I'm stupid enough to tell you what I've been craving? Oh, that I've been craving, toad crunches, or that I can't stand having my feet tickled. You're just not going to find out my weakness. Yeah, okay, so I guess we will have to use some of the stuff we brought. Oh god, is this a test? You said about toad crunches and being tickled. Oops, I mean, um... No, that must have been some other gnome. Okay, so you'll help me in exchange for toad crunches. If you think you can just buy my cooperation, you're a bigger imbecile than I thought. You will tell me sooner or later. Well then, should we... Oh wow, I can release this guy. Maybe later. Okay, let's see now, I'm a little bit clueless. All I know is we have to first use the feather on him. You tickle the gnome's feet. <laughs> okay. Now, will you help me or do I have to tickle you a little bit more? It's not like I'm going to get anything out of helping you, is it? As I figure, as I figure, that artifact is the only thing keeping me out of the slave pens. Where that gets further along worse than, uh, yeah, you know what. Let's try this again then. You dangle the toad crunchy above the gnome's nose, just out of reach, and hold the feather menacingly close to his feet. Now, will you help me or do I have to tickle your feet some more? Alright, alright, I'm bitten. Bring me some soft leather and a log from my magic tree, and I'll see what I can do. Very well, but don't you get the crunches? You don't get the crunches until I get back though. Okay. I believe I have the magic logs right here. You got everything! Magic logs, soft leather and the crunchy you offered. Yes, I do. Well, let me up off this rack and I'll get started. I can't do anything while I'm uh, all tied up. Okay, release. What do you think you're doing, says the mourner guard, I guess. You are meant to be getting information out of him, not making friends. I need to let him up his to fix the device. Okay, but without the proper paperwork, he stays in this room. Rip Gnome. He has dissolved. What the heck? You untie the bonds and the gnome's wrists and ankles dissolve. No, and hand him the magic log. Soft leather and the strange device as well as the toad crunches. Okay, so this is actually specified in the uh, quest guide. He may disappear. Oh, never mind his back. The fix was to go up the up the ladder and uh, return, but he seems to be back. We should probably talk to him next. Have you fixed the device yet? You're gonna have to wait a bit. Okay. While we wait, we have to go to the Feldip Hills. So let's get going. More specifically, you'll have to go right here to get some ogre belows. So this is the spot, it's an actual cave, let's go get the ogre thingy from my chest it says, maybe this one, yeah there you go, 
So we got the ogre bellows. Bellows? I think it's bellows. Now we gotta get some uh, some toads and also color them. So le we need at least a green, yellow, blue and uh, red toad. So let's do this. You suck the green dye into the bellows. Let's catch the toad. You don't have any... O oh. We need swamp gas. Wait a second. Maybe, maybe these are the toads we gotta catch. There you go. There you go, we have a green toad very well. Let's repeat the process with a yellow one. Until we get all four colors. Well, then we are free go. We are free to go visit the ships. So let's just head to Arduni. As a matter of fact, I completely forgot. I got distracted by the toads. Let's get our fixed device from that gnome. Well, guess we could. We could also walk this way. Are you done now? There you go. This is the uh, device right here. Fixed device. Let's load it with the yellow toad. And now let's head back up. Very well. So this is how this is gonna work. Um, as far as I'm uh, reading. Uh, as far as I guess from reading the uh, quest guide. We will have to wield this. So there's four groups of uh, ships, right? This is the yellow group, I believe. Yes, it's yellow and tinge. I have equipped my device with the yellow toad. Now we gotta hit only one. Nothing tells you how to how to hit. Oh, it's got this option called fire. Oh my god, what the heck this is? Um. Do we have to wait for the ship to go through or what? Oh my god, this barely moves. So there's a limit I can't, can't go higher. No, really, this barely responds to my uh, to my commands. Fire! Okay, let's take this down, load it with a um, with some blue dye, with some blue toad, and do the same with every group of ship. Basically, uh, the, the the ships, the blue ships are somewhere here. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, I've wasted two of my frogs. I've only missed twice, so I'll just go back, grab some more, maybe convert uh, another set of dye and. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit annoying. Okay, so I think I got them all. It was fairly annoying. Pro tip, just make sure your uh, crosshair is fully on the ship. Otherwise, you will miss. Right, so I've colored all ships. Let's continue. Yeah. It's time to report to the head mourner and see what he has to say. Have you finished with those ship yet? Yes, it is done. What's next? It is good to see your enthusiasm. I was going to get one of the others to do the job, but as you are here... It has been quite a while since anyone got ill from the plague, so I would like you to see to it that people do. What the heck is that? In the background, what the heck is that? Anyway, but the plague doesn't exist, how am I meant to do that? We have never tried this before, but some joker put something in our food not too long ago that gave us all symptoms akin to those of the plague. Yeah, it, it might have have been myself. If you can find out what it was, that we were poisoned with, you could reproduce the effects. If done right, the poison should not be fatal and could help restock our dwindling supply of cheap labor. We can have our men remove the infected citizens. Distribution should be easy enough because of the city walls, no one can grow their own food, right? So all the food there comes from one of the three government supply points. Let me get this clear, you want me to A. Find out who poisoned you, B. Find out what they poisoned you with, C. Find out how to make the poison, D. Produce enough poison to affect a lot of people, E. And finally contaminate the food stores with the poison. Your assessment is correct, only two of the stores need to be affected. I would help you, but I am not a biologist. Return when you have fulfilled the task. Should I say tasks? Yes, sir. God damn, we have a lot to do. Also, while here, you should probably grab this rotten apple. Very useful next. 
Next, we have to visit Elena, who is right, south, uh, right outside the uh, West Ardony walls. There she is. Bad with clicking today. Hello again, Elena. How dare you enter my house, mourner? Get out, I think you're confusing me. It's Lord Fuffy. Oh, sorry, I didn't recognize you in all that mourner gear. How's it going? Alright, but I could do with your help. What's the problem? I've been asked to produce a poison based on rotten apples. I doubt any poison based solely on apples, rotten or not, would be very effective, she says. Well, I put a rotten apple in the mourner's stew. I'm told that the effect was much like the symptoms of the plague. Hmm, that sounds like they were ill from some sort of toxin. I should think it was a mold of some sort that had the effect, not the rotten apple itself. What do you need it for? I need to poison a large food store in order to get a mourner's trust. That's awful. I can't help you do such an endeavor. If I don't gain the trust of the mourners, then the people of West Ardony will have a much worse time than the effects of that toxin. Elena, trust me. I think you should tell me what's ju just what's going on. Well, I'll start from when we found out that the plague was a hoax. After returning to Ardony, I visited the king to tell him of our discovery. As you can guess, she, uh, he already knew about the uh, plague being a deception. I knew it, but why? Well, King Lathas told me that while his brother was exploring the realm west of here, he was taken by the Dark Lord, who forced him to drink from the Chalice of Eternity. I'm told his corrupted, uh, this corrupted him. <laughs> you don't sound so sure about that. Where his alignment lay matters little now. You must understand I was acting on the best information I had at the time, but I jump ahead of myself. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. King Lathas explained to me that in order to stop the Dark Lord, we needed to stop his brother, and to do that we needed to find a way to the West Realm. I was led through a cave system packed full of traps that led right under the mountains to the west, and its heart was an evil mage named Ibon. He held the Well of Voyage, a way of traveling to the Western Realm. I like the fact that we, ha we get a quick recap of the story. It's a good thing, especially since, it's, uh, especially since it's a pretty long story. My guide went a little mad and, uh, well, to cut a long story short, I eventually had to destroy Ibon. This saved my guide and gave us access to the well. Unfortunately, Ibon had messed with the toxic magic of the well and mages were needed to repair it. I returned to King Lathas who told me he'd, he'd see to fixing the well. Sometime later I received the summons to meet with Lathas. The king informed me that the well was repaired and I was finally... Well, I was to finally go and deal with his brother. He said I could expect help from his ally when I got there. Once more I passed through the warren of traps under the mountain, this time passing through the well of voyage. This eventually led me to a land known as uh, known by its inhabitants as Tyrenwin. Then we are... I, I, I could summarize this a little better, I believe. <laughs> Catapult, boom, here I am. There are people beyond the mountain range. People, yes, but not like you or I. I was just coming to them. Where was I? Oh yeah, I was in the woods of the Tyranwin a short while when I was caught in a fight between two factions of elves. Elves? Really? I thought they'd gone from this land. No, they're still there and uh, in some, some, uh, some form of civil war too, it seems. Anyway, back to the story. Luckily, the winning side in the fight was my contact. Lathas allied with one of those elf factions? Yes, I didn't think about that at the time, but it did strike me as a little odd after I thought about it. Anyway, a plan was devised to blow up King Tyrus, a plan I was successful in carrying out. As I said, I was acting on the best information I had available at the time. I left Tyrenwin to return here and inform King Lathas that his brother was dealt with, carrying a magically sealed message from the elves. On my return journey to Lathas's castle, I was confronted by an elf from the rebel faction. He knew a great deal about me and my deeds. He also knew of my message I carried. He cast a spell on the message that let me open it. What did it say? 
it's told of how King Lathes wants to reclaim the land given by his father to the Knights of Camelot and of a deal between the elves and the king promising the help of the Dark Lord in this endeavor. I knew he was up to no good, but how could he side with anything that calls itself the Dark Lord? Honestly, eh, some cool points right there. This was my thinking too, so I agreed to go and meet with the leader of the Elven Rebellion. I was taken to a small village in a hidden valley, where I spoke with an elf named Arianwin. He revealed to me that our mourners are not quite what we thought. In fact, they're elves who follow the Dark Lord. I was asked by Arianwin to infiltrate them and find out their plan. I've managed to fool them into thinking I was a new recruit, which was no small task in itself. I think I need to win the trust of the head mourner before they will let me, or rather tell me, anything useful. And so my story ends here, there you go, that's some tale she says, so what now? I guess I'll follow the head mourner's instructions until they let me in on the plan. Alright, oh finally, I'll help she says. You'd better be right about this she says, and I'd do better make sure you get the stocks in right so no one dies. Bring me a sample of rotten apple to examine. I'll also see if I can make some uh, counter accent for the toxin. Alright, I'll be back shortly. As a matter of fact, I have it right here. Yep, there you go. Here's the apple. Alright, let's get started. Elena starts some tests on the apple. This will take a while. Come back in a bit, so uh, and I should be able to tell you all about this toxin. Okay. Right, so I think she's done. She says, I've managed to isolate a small sample of the toxin. It's a byproduct of the mold that grows on these apples. It's not fatal, so a counteractant shouldn't be necessary. How big is the store that you're going to affect? Well, I was instructed to contaminate the two distribution points. That's over half the food in West Ardony. You're going to need a huge amount of the toxin to do that. You're also going to need to refine it too. Or people will notice the rotten apples in amongst the food they're eating or buying. This is starting to sound a little tricky, can't you make it for me? I would, but I don't have the right equipment here to do anything in bulk. Alright then, tell me the process and I'll get started. Right, then the first thing to do is mash up a lot of rotten apples and you'll need to dissolve the toxin into a liquid, liquid <laughs> that has a very low evaporation point some form of solvent. I was told about a book on explosives that discussed a solvent perfect for this job, but I don't remember who told me about it. Sorry, I can't be more of help. Now, where was I? Oh yeah. Next, the useless solid can be strained out. This should leave you with a solution of, or, uh, of the toxin in solvent. Finally, hit the mixture to evaporate off the solvent. Be careful of naked flames, as the solvent will be highly flammable. Once all that's done, you'll be left with a white powder. Be very careful not to breathe it, breathe it or ingest it, as this is, uh, yeah, very toxic. <laughs> and that's all it is. Why isn't everything ever easy? Yeah, okay. So she gives me, she gives me, large sleeve. Okay. No sieve, sieve, large sieve. Sure. You may want to check out the orch orchard, just north of the city. I hear no one has tended it since the uh, blight infected the trees there. God damn, this is a long one. Very well, next we will have to go to this place, I believe. South of the uh, tree gnome stronghold. Okay, now we have to use the barrel on the rotten apple pile. Says you scoop up a barrel full of the rotten apples now. I believe we have to place the the rotten apples here. Oh, there you go, there you go. So I'm gonna smash them in my full armor. Okay, not sure what that happened, what happened earlier, but the barrel duplicated itself. So let's see now. Let's use the uh, barrel of naphtha on the barrel of apple. You mix the naphtha with the apple mush. Okay, now let's use the sieve. On the naphtha apple mix. You sieve the solids out of the mixture. 
toxic nafta i i think we're done mm. next we gotta find a range and i'm here in the mourners headquarters yet again because i have to use the uh, toxic nafta on a range like so it says you evaporate the nafta and you are left with a powdery residue on the inside of the barrel good good so now we have to deposit this toxin into three or rather two locations first one is right here you add the toxin to the wheat and after a few seconds of mixing you can tell the difference right let's also find another sack of grain or rather grain sack somewhere else in the city and that's gonna be the church or not or no never mind never mind i was right just go up the ladder and use the toxin on the grain sack well the poisoning has been complete last report to the head mourner is the gnome still there yes it is yes he is you are back already how is the epidemic going the epidemic oh you mean the poisoning subtle subtle as a brick yes that how is it going that's all done and dusted <laughs> all right sorry that was a bad pun yes right well anyway this is good news give it a few days and the slave pens will be full again what do you need slave uh, slaves for anyway i guess you have proven yourself now i will tell you of our discovery not long after we convinced Latas that it was a good idea to let us run West Arduni, we found evidence that somewhere under the mountains to the west is a place of ancient power. We have been using those we take from the city to help us dig down to it. Unfortunately, we have opened up a few old caverns infested with beasts. We lose a few slaves every day to them. We had better find this temple soon. Temple? Yes, a book recently found tell us of a, uh, tells us of a temple built by the early elven settlers. The temple was made around an altar of unknown origin. All we know about the altar is that it gives us access to some very powerful magic. So that is the real purpose behind us being here. Not really. Like I say, we are here to prepare uh, the way for the Dark Lord, but gaining the power of the temple will speed things up a lot. Now, you know about the temple, I have a new task for you, but you'll have to wait. One of the guards has taken the excavation site key to the locksmith to be copied. Report in regularly and I will uh, see that you get a copy as soon as it... Well, as, as soon as he gets back and done we are, god damn, I thought this was never gonna end. Done we are. So we got two quest points, 25,000 experience lamp or rather experience in thieving, 25k constitution experience, access to the death guard headquarters in the village of Letia, crystal teleport seed, nice, full mourner gear, and two treasure hunter keys, great! So I guess we will wait a little, and then begin mornings and part 2.